So welcome back friends to uh, part three of our uh, homestead logging series, I guess it is. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bucking um, the, this, this beautiful dug fir into pieces uh, for further processing. Of course our bread and butter, the good stuff here, is going to be used for the sawmill and to make in dimensional lumber or timbers. And then everything up above when it starts getting too small, I'd say pretty much smaller than about an 8 inch or so, then that will be for firewood. So I want to talk a little bit about scaling and what that means. Now, logs, when you sell logs to a, to a mill, we know that the log, uh, it, it's, got a, it's got a kind of a cone shape to it, kind of a, you know, a tape, a big, big taper in it. So what they devised back in the day uh, to, to estimate how much board feet is in a log is called a scaling method. There's a couple different ones, but f around here for the most part, what they do is they take the smallest end of the log. So if you, if we cut this and it's a, it's a 17 footer, and they're gonna take that small end, they're basically gonna take a cylinder of wood that whatever that diameter is all the way through the log. Now, that's not so good for, for the landowners and it's better for the mill because you're giving them a whole bunch of wood. And the longer the logs that you give, the smaller the taper on one end, the more wood that they get. So there's kind of a, 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 a give and take with lengths. You know, the, the mills want them really long so they can take advantage of that taper. And the landowners want to give short ones so they get more board footage. I think it's kind of an unfair system, especially where we live, because we live in an alpine environment. We have mountain logs, and mountain logs have great tapers to them. They, they grow slower because the environment up here is tough and you kind of get the short end of the stick when it comes to scaling. You, but you paying attention? Nah. <laughs> so, uh, that just, just, that, that's the, kind of the, the story on scaling. So, uh, back, or back in the day, I lost my train of thought, back in the day when the logs were massive, when they developed the system, the huge dug firs, you might have a 30 foot stick, 31 foot stick, whatever, and it didn't hardly have any taper in it, maybe just a couple inches, so that really wasn't significant. So just, just kind of for your own information. Give me an estimate, Jack, how wide that log is. What do you think? How many inches? Maybe two feet up and down. Yeah, side to side, across. The diameter of it. Maybe one and a half feet. Well, yeah, so you're saying 16 inches? Uh -huh. So, and you are, you're right. It is a 16 incher. Now this is a Spencer logging tape. You've seen me wear this around. These are really wonderful tapes. I first I first found these when I was doing excavating and I was working in the mud. I couldn't find a tape that would last more than a week or so. And this is the only tape that I could ever find that would last year after year after year. I didn't even know that they were made for loggers back at the time. But it's a 50 foot tape. And what we do is we take a horseshoe nail and that right there is a horseshoe nail bent over. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is when you start taping this, you can stick that horseshoe nail in there and it'll hold, and when you get to the other end, you give it a yank, and it'll pull out, and you can get your tape back, right? Okay, so we've got a nice 16 incher. We can get lots of beautiful timbers out of here. It doesn't hardly have any limbs or just small ones in it. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. It would be a real shame to cut it up for firewood. So what I want you to do, Jack, is I want you to, we're gonna make this into 12 footers. So if you're gonna have a 12 footer foot timber board on your sawmill, mm -hmm. You don't want to cut it right at 12 in case you have a rough end. You want to cut it at about what they call a trim. So cut it about six or seven, eight inches over. That way we could square the edges up. So on this first one here, I want you to cut this at 12 foot, eight inches. When was making us hamburgers again today? I don't know. It'd be a surprise, I guess. I thought you said you would. It is right here, precisely on the end. Okay. Well, actually, the one inch starts right there at the end of the loop. Mm. And it's fine. Sometimes if you get some old hard bark like this, it's, it doesn't want to stick in there. It's fine. Just hook it down in the wood like you did there, but just add another inch at the other end. So just make it two feet. And yeah, we'll just make it, let's just, let's just make it a, an even 13 foot. That way, if you cut a little crooked, we'll still have a full 12 in here. Okay. Okay. All right, run it up, grab your hatchet and make a mark. At the 13 foot mark. Okay. Thirteen feet. Just a 
pine cone stuck right there. Pine cone? <laughs> it's a fur cone. Okay, a couple questions. So Jack, you're getting ready to buck this. You're going to buck it to 13 feet. What's important, because this is a saw log, is that you cut as straight as possible. Mm -hmm. We'll have a foot over cut to account for any variations, but this is our this is our bread and butter. This is the cream of the of the whole thing. We want to look after it the best. So, what are some hazards that we have right here, right now? Where are you going to stand when you buck this log? Right here. Why? Because this is the uphill side and it'll roll downhill. That's right, uphill side. What about uh, footing? You have good footing here? You have a clear area where you're going to be working where you won't stumble and fall onto your saw? Mm -mm, you got to clear this area out. You'll clear this area out, right. Now, let's talk a little bit about how logs fall. Now, if a log you're going to cut is suspended on both ends, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to cut at the top. Is that in compression or tension? That is tension. If it's suspended on both ends? Cause, yeah, because then there's weight on each side. Right, so stand on both ends and you're going to cut in the middle. What do you have on the top of that log? Tension. You have compression. Okay. It's going to squeeze. Whenever you have a compression situation in a log, it means it's going to pinch your bar, right? So if it's going like this and it's suspended by two points and it's all that weight's pushing down, you've got compression on the top. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a problem. So that's a, saw, a log that you might want to start cutting from the bottom. Now, if it's sitting on a stump right in the middle, and the ends are just kind of hanging out here like that, when you start cutting on the top, is that going to be a compression or tension? It's going to be tension and then compression on the bottom. Compression on the bottom. So you know when you come through, it's going to be a bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit pinchy on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look at this log and to tell me from the section below where you've marked a cut, is this log in compression or is it in tension? All right, Jack, you've had a chance to look at that. Tell me, is this log going to be in compression or tension where you cut? I'm going to say tension. It's going to be tension, and you're absolutely right. If we look, the log right there is contacting the ground right at your axe. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. And all of this whole area here is all off the ground. So it's going to be pushing down on this side from the weight. That's right. Perfect, perfect situation for you. You're going to be able to cut. You're not going to have to worry about wedging. It's going to come down. You'll just have to be careful. You'll have a tendency to want to pinch at that last little bit, that last little cut. So make sure when you're getting ready to finish your cut, full throttle, move your saw back and forth a little bit. If you feel it pinching, pull it out. Okay. Okay? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Warm up your saw. Let's get ready for our first buck. So anything surprise you on that? Uh-uh. Maybe that it rolled the way you didn't think it was going to roll? Yeah. Yeah, it rolled back towards you just a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, sometimes you never know about those things. That's why you always have to be ready. So one thing I really commend you on, you did good, is you see this branch right here? Uh-huh. That's sitting just an inch underneath of that, of your kerf. And you were able to stop your saw fast enough where you just barely even nicked it. That's really good. That means you're controlling your bar. You're not getting in the dirt. One thing that I would probably might want to improve upon is this cut. If you look down at right here, uh -huh. you'll see that if this were straight, you probably are about two inches angling a little bit. So kind of keep an eye on that. 
and try to cut that a little bit straighter. And the problem is it's also on a slope though. It's hard, it comes with practice. But So I want you to grab the logger tape here. I want you to run up another 13 feet, take your hatchet, make another mark, and let's cut another stick out of this. I think this would be good for two mill logs. Okay. I think I put it in too tight. Oh, no, I didn't. All right, so take your tape and at your 13 foot mark, give me a rough estimate of the diameter of this tree. The diameter? Mm hmm. Um, take your tape here. Stand to straddle the tree like this. Mm hmm. And take it and kind of estimate if you were to put flat sides up here what this is on the edge to edge. So, so we've got, what we've got here is we've got 13 inches. So that's still a good sized timber. We could, get a tw we could get a 10 by 10 out of that. So let's go ahead and uh, make your buck. Now before you do that though, I want an assessment of what the hazards are and if you're gonna be in compression or you're gonna be in tension on this buck. Okay. I'm thinking it's neither. Let me look at it here. Where's your buck? Right here. Go look at that end. I see that end is hanging off. But then that end is the air too, but further on it's connected, so. All right, what's your verdict? Is it gonna be a compression or tension? I'm thinking maybe tension. Tension? Just because of that side. I would agree. We got a suspended butt down there and a lot of weight down there, but it's going to be pretty light. And remember, it, it doesn't have to be a neither. If it's sitting on flat ground and it's adequately supported, uh, it could be a neither. But I think you're you're right. I think that this is in, uh, this is going to be a little bit of tension on the top, so it should be an easy buck. Any hazards you see here? Uh, your chainsaw's in the way and there's lots of brush on the ground. That's right. How about this for example? Here's your buck, right? Uh -huh. Where are you going to cut? You see this? Uh -huh. That limb? Uh -huh. What potential problem could that cause you? Could make me cut into it. And I could also trip on it. No, that, you're kind of you're getting there. Loggers don't wear, don't have hems in the bottom of their pants. Uh -huh. If you see guys that do this professionally, sometimes their pants are really short even. The reason why they don't have a hem in their pant is for this exact reason right here. A hem, a pant, will catch in a limb or a branch mm -hmm. and it'll drag you down. It can roll you inside of a log, it can break your leg, break your back. What they want is they want the pants to tear out. That's why tin pants don't come hemmed. That way you could take them and you could just tear them like that if you get hung up on something. What can happen right here is that you can cut this, right? Mm -hmm. You come through and cut it. This branch is long. It's laying underneath there. It's a hazard laying underneath there. You're gonna be standing right on it. You didn't even know it. What were, happened if you were to cut right here and that was a big log and that were to take off down the hill and you were standing on that branch? It'd flip you over and smash you in, under the tree. It could flip you over the log and the log could roll over you and crush you. So it's not likely to happen on a little one like this, but this is the type of thing you wanna look for when you're clearing your safety zone. And it it's just comes from experience, but look for things like that. Now, how could you mitigate this so that it's not a hazard for you? Uh, maybe cut it off? Cut it. That's the first thing you want to do. Come in here, clear out your area, cut that guy off of there, and see how long it is? Uh -huh. That thing would have rolled and flipped back there and have taken your head off. And you wouldn't even have known it. It's all the way over there. Yep. All right. 
let's go ahead and uh, get your saw started and uh, get this bucked.